The yes, possibility Evan. exists that if the Cowboys sign a young quarterback to an extension here in the year 2019 of our Lord, <laughs> that it will be the highest contract ever given the, to the a European Dallas Cowboys kind of quarterback. Not just a quarterback, but any player in Cowboys history, oh my God. such as Demarcus Lawrence, who is now the highest paid player in Dallas Cowboys history, based on his contract that a he signed lid. a month ago. How many? How many? And it, yeah, as everyone said at the time, he's going to have that distinction. Even even Stephen Jones said, "Well, he's not going to have it long, right. but he has it right, yeah. for now." And uh, so there, Kevin. Good. So yes, he's, just go back to your apple nut muffin. That Prescott again. There's the, the big argument of. What is he worth, and why would you, why would you negotiate against yourself? Well, the market realities are, you know, I, I think we said on this podcast maybe five weeks ago that the the absolute the absolute floor for Dak Prescott in a new contract was twenty five twenty eight, right? And it was only going to go up the longer you took. And that was the absolute floor. That's not saying he was going to get it done. I believe on this podcast last week or the week before, you mentioned uh, Russell Wilson's deal. Yeah, and and how that factors in on this. Now, again, because Russell's getting thirty five, right? Yeah. Uh, so here uh, we didn't get into that because, but, but, but he has won a Super Bowl, right? And he's taken a team to a Super Bowl another time and lost. He's had more success. He got screwed by his than Dak Prescott has, but. Uh, so wait, let, before sure. you get into this, sure. Your belief is that Dak's deal will be better than Russell Wilson's deal? No, no, okay, no, okay, I didn't, no, because I, I think that uh, the the market realities are he has had more success. Also, this is Russell Wilson's third contract. We're talking about Dak's second, so that that also factors into it as sure. well. So uh, now, all of that being said. What Russell Wilson got, which still comes in right after uh, Aaron Rodgers, when you look at the when you look at the average, right? Um, th- there's still a pecking order here, but the the people at the top are raising the ceiling, and that raises the floor. Sure. So when the floor, when I said the floor is 25, 28, six, seven, eight weeks ago, earlier in the off season, that was before Russell Wilson's contract. That that does have a direct link to Dak Prescott in that you're looking at the, the an age of a guy, an up-and-coming guy, and it's something else we talked about before. Um, you know, Dak Prescott has performed well beyond his contract his first three years in the league. Well beyond, not even close. So, So you're also making up for some of what, he hasn't gotten by outperforming his contract in what will be uh, again. He'll sign an extension that goes after this, but and you know, look, they should be farther along on him than anyone else right now because that is that is their priority. David, let me here. Here's the question I've got for you, um, and I don't think we've sat down and just kind of ranked these. But at this stage, where do you guys, 32 quarterbacks, 32 franchises in the NFL, we've had the draft, and, you know, I mean, you can take whatever you want and and rank guys. In what percentile would you put Dak as a starting quarterback? This is why there's such a debate on him, because if you look at winning, he's in the top ten. Right. If you look not, at not percent you, top ten players, top ten player. quarterbacks. Yeah. It, if yeah. you look at if you look at actual number of wins and winning percentage over the last three years, right. you would put him one or two. Well, now, but I, I don't. Yeah. I think but, even, but, yeah. even with that, you'd factor in some of the inaccuracies with the throws and stuff. And I mean, sure. I, I, well, that's you would rank what, him in the top ten. That's what fans that. do. Yeah. But here's here's the thing on my issue. Where would that. you rank him? I mean, well, uh, would I, you put overall, him, is he in the top? Is he a top ten quarterback? I, yeah, I think he's in the top ten quarterbacks of the league. Yeah, okay. at the bottom of that ten, but uh, but yeah, he's a top ten. quarterback. And, and would you have put him in that top ten heading into last year? No, he upped his game some last he year. He certainly did after the after Amari Cooper. When you look at his at his passer rating, he went from That's different. Yeah, uh, before it was like an 80, 83, and but after it's like 103. 103. Right. So yeah. he, he went up. Uh, but, that you know, you could probably say that about a lot of quarterbacks. You put better players around them, they're going to look better. Sure. I want to bring up something when you talk about contracts. Now, that's something real quick. Though. When you're talking about that talent level, 
Now you get at another level, which is why some fans go, why would you pay him this $30 million plus a year? And it is going to be, I would expect him to average around 31 32 probably mm-hmm. because uh, because of his age, because of what he's done to this point, because of keeping the nucleus together. You have a problem All with that? It's what the market is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, 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 but I will say this. Yeah, it's going to drive some fans crazy because what you just brought up about Amari Cooper, they're going to go, you know what? Okay, Aaron Rodgers, I'll give Aaron Rodgers a 34.5 million average. I'll give Russell Wilson, who's won a Super Bowl and – and had well, that's, this, I mean, that's and what had you're this. always going to run into is that the, the, the we have we okay. have this basis of fan in Dallas and, and in large parts around the NFL that the only thing that measures a player's worth, in particular a quarterback, is number of Super Bowl wins, which Super I think Bowl is, wins. is not fair and not accurate. It's not. But here here's the other point of that, which I was getting to is they would argue, OK, but Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson, just like Tom Brady, have shown they will elevate the play mm-hmm. of the receivers and other players around them. Mm-hmm. Does Dak Prescott elevate the play of those around him, or does he need those around him to come up to the level of those other guys? And then you're going to go, well, that's not worth as much money if you're not elevating the play of those around you. Well, that, I would take, I'd take Tom Brady out of any conversation. But that's, right? a, that's a legitimate question, though. because It, it is a legitimate because, question. Because Tom Brady— And I think that strikes to the core but of can this. You like compare, but can you compare Dak— to Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. No, because but but here's the here's the point. If, and, and how good has Russell Wilson been without having? He's pretty good. Quite as balanced uh, at all, and, uh, and good enough to get beat by Dak Prescott in the first round of the playoffs the, this past th- year. That's now true. he takes teams that shouldn't be to the playoffs to the that's playoffs right. or on the cusp. But then how much farther does he get them? So now now you have all of uh, again. It's always a, a shifting argument. To but something. but the point is, you you're not paying him as much as those guys. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the You're deal. Not, the, right. the deal here is that there is a clear look. Aaron Rodgers, it, to me, is an all-time quarterback. He's one of the the best spinners of a well, of a I, football. That was my point. Brady, in the history of the game. Brady's maybe the best quarterback to ever play but, the game. Yes, maybe the best quarterback. And Aaron yeah. Rodgers is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and so, and and Russell Wilson, maybe. I I I really you know when we were in Seattle last year. And you're watching that game, and of course, because that is the, always the easy comparison: uh, Dak and Russell Wilson. Yeah, you know, similar kind of quarterbacks, just from the standpoint of that they will both get out and run a little bit. Uh, but then, but Russell will, Russell runs much more than Dak does. I feel like um, he uses that not, weapon more. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. Not now. Not yeah, he did earlier. He yeah, did earlier. Not as much now. But then he drops a dime on a receiver going down the sideline, yeah. and it's like, oh my gosh, that, Dak's not doing that. So, so uh, timeout. Kevin said, "Dropped a dime." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I am I offending you? You're very hip now. I am very, very hip. hip. I'm much more hip than you. I'll say that. <laughs> so, so anyway, the point is, is that yes, those three to me are right at the top uh, of the league. Uh, but I want to make a point here about Kirk Cousins. All right. Why sure. are we going to Kirk Cousins? Because we're talking about money. Because this is the issue with fans. Sure. The issue with fans is you can't give him that much money, and, and everybody's so offended by the money. Yeah, they are so offended by it, and yeah. like you said, this is just the market. Kirk Cousins, who's never won anything, got a three-year, eighty-four million dollar guaranteed contract for the Minnesota Vikings. That's twenty-eight million dollars a year for Kirk yeah. Cousins. Okay, what's Jimmy Garoppolo done? Yeah, look what, at what his look, for look San at San his deal. You look across the board. And, and that's what people don't understand also is that, as you just said about the DeMarcus Lawrence contract, is DeMarcus Lawrence the greatest cowboy ever? No, no. he it's just, is not. It's, it's the market, and it's it's inflation, time, and it's yeah. the time. 